Hey there. Oh, I changed my monitor setup. Looks like I need to figure out monitors. Properties. Heh, <laughs> this is fun. Not that one. That one. Cool. That should be better. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Cool. <laughs> it's funny that my tab thing shows up here now. <laughs> oh well it'll be fine for today uh yeah so uh this is day 21 of 100 days of code and i'm going to be playing with geektra's shortest path algorithm on graphs um i tried attempting it yesterday after reviewing some stuff but no avail so uh yeah I'm trying it out again we'll see we'll see how this works Okay, so I've got tests that are just printing it out and it just, it does print solution and it didn't implement print solution yesterday. Okay, but all it's doing is printing out the distance Sorry, not the distance. Uh, yeah, okay. So it's printing out the index of the distance, which is the value in the graph plus the distance. Okay. Let's see if I can tinker with that a little bit. What can I do? So it's got to be somewhere in here that the problem is. It's either in here or it's in this finding the shortest path or min distance, min distance. Yeah, I'll check here first. Utility function to find the vertex with a minimum distance value from the set of vertices not yet included in the shortest path tree. Okay. If not shortest path and distance V is less than min. Okay, I think that I want to print out min. For everyone. Min is either zero or 999. Sorry, the big number, the really big number. Oh, there was a four, there was a four. They're mostly zeros, so that seems wrong. That means I probably did my math wrong somewhere. Okay, so this is finding the min distance, which it's actually doing, but it's not setting the min distance properly. So that would likely be in here somewhere. Distances at all, yeah. 
Okay, so we actually get a four, and then we get a bunch of zeros, and an eight. All right, so. Going to print out the graph. here zero zero eight okay so it might have something to do with how I am accessing the graph looks right so I'm going to change this back to distances out. Let's go up to distances. Okay, there's a zero. There's a one. Is that a seven? change these to while loops while i is less than graph dot length minus one I'm using count that's fine uh, i guess i can use count as well that way it's easier to see when it's referenced sure I increment count appropriately. One. One. Yep, that's fine. Then while V is less than minus one V plus equals one and actually initialize these V equals zero and count equals zero Yes. Yes, I did. Still all zeros, which is wrong. Okay, so that passes in min distance as expected. U is closest. 
guess I can make this U just so it's easier to understand easy to compare the easier to compare the code to so all closest becomes you shouldn't change anything right yep still zero let's go back up to men Is that where I'm getting in trouble? Do I need to actually check that it's false? Still all zeros. Okay, let me, I know we run min distance here. Let me print out. Closest PU. <laughs> PU. Ah, so there is something happening. Okay, so it's probably right here. Okay. Graph UV and distance is U not equals to lint. I'm going to say I guess not equal to is fine. And then distance is U plus graph UV is less than distance is V. zeros should go look at some of the other implementations. Yeah, nice to join the min index equals one, and you our max value, that's all fine. Resetting these, that's also fine. Yeah. 
We can use some ruby built-ins to make that a little bit nicer. But this is always returning zero. No, it's not always returning zero. Right? I hope not. No, because we're printing it out and it's not always returning zero, so that's fine. Yep. Okay. Oh, and is it returning the index? min index ah but what is the min that min is always zero Okay, cool, I thought that might be the case. Yeah, because zero plus zero plus zero plus zero. Uh, let's see what my shortest path looks like when it gets passed in. Oh, nothing has been processed to start with. That shouldn't be right. to like ignore ones or something huh, I bet this is it it's greater than zero haha -ha. now that's something yeah so I bet that zeros in this adjacency matrix mean that they are not adjacent. One is the least it can be. Haha. -ha. Got it. Glad you're all here to see this. <laughs> Alright, that's awesome. So this works. I just had a little hiccup. Well, that's freaking cool. I wonder if these have to check if it's zero or not. Yep, right there. Cool. Oh, so cool. All right, let's see if I can clean this up a bit and glean some more information out of it as I clean it up. Aha! And I believe that is correct. We can just check real quick. Is 
0, 4, 12, 19, 21, 11, 9, 8, 14. 0, 14, 12, 9, 21, 11, or 19, 21, 11, 9, 18, 14. 4, 12, 19, 21, 11, 9, 8, 14. Yep, nice. Cool. Now it's time to clean up. one so we likely want to do at why are they doing that distances is already a, an array right so we can do distances dot each with index value and index and then if forward is path index not shortest path index and value is less than or equal to min min equals value and min index equals index that should do the same thing yes nice uh, not really any less lines of code, but it feels more, feels more Ruby. Okay. Closest. Don't want to replace all use because that would be weird. And get crazy. Ahaha, <laughs> what's up, Eric? Ooga booga, huh? In case you're interested, I am uh, cleaning up Dijkstra's short Dijkstra's shortest path. I got it working, so I'm pretty stoked. I copied over some. Uh, C++ code and translated it to Ruby and got it working and have a decent idea of what's going on. This right here. Dijkstra? Yeah, Dijkstra. I don't know. It's just the name of some algorithm. I don't know who the guy is. Basically, it takes a big graph like this. It starts at zero. Node zero. And then all the lines, the numbers on the lines are like the distance on how far these nodes are apart. And it finds all the shortest paths from the source. So like, uh, I don't know if the pictures are getting bigger. They do. Like starting from Z, zero, moves to four. Then after it gets to four, 
12 is really far away, so it goes back to 8. Then 9 is not that far away from 0. And does that, and eventually it fills out and gets a tree instead of uh, this big graph with a bunch of confusing routes. Use case for that? No idea. I was learning about graphs and uh, this was one of the algorithms that I recognized, so I figured I'd try and implement it. <laughs> Just what you were about to ask? Nice. <laughs> Yeah, I guess if I, was, if I was to think about it, use cases for graphs, or I guess the biggest one that's relevant is like social networks. Um, you can do them for other things like directions in a city, pathing through a city. So I guess finding the shortest path makes a lot of sense, especially like for GPS stuff. And if it's taking into it, like if it weights those uh, connections between the two nodes by things like speed limit, traffic, that type of thing. Finding the shortest path is super helpful. So I guess that does make sense. I have an idea. My Ruby's been improving though. I learned this a couple days ago. Initializing an array with a length and default values at those uh, at each index. And you can do the same thing with hashes. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty sweet. See ya. Thanks for stopping in. This is awesome. Have fun with work. Uh, not shortest path. Closest is greater than zero. Oh, right. The Python implementation did something with this. Sharp. Where's Python? Oh, this looks like Python. Oh, it does have sys.max in it. Huh. They have all the same checks here. Graph is greater than zero. Set is false. is greater than huh so that is one two three checks where this is one two three four so they eliminated one of these shortest path shortest path is there graph uv Ah, they don't include this check. So I wonder if it works without that. Fail. You. Oh, well, failed for a different reason. Ah, right there. Can't run test on a web page. Nice, and that works. Let's think about that. Why do you not have to check if it is... What was that check? Oh, if it's not equal to int max. That's because it should always be... Yeah. 
this should cover that check. That's why. If graph dot if closest plus graph dot closest v is less than distances v. Okay. Sweet. Okay, this makes sense. Uh, I think I'll pause on refactoring for now. Okay. So, uh, I think that I should be able to do this with an adjacency list. Um, I did see that here. I'll just redo this real quick. So this is a lot more complex, is what I'm reading.
Okay. Create a man who emphasizes V, where V is the number of vertices. I'm going to give a graph. Graph. Every node of Menheap contains vertex number. Distance value of the vertex. Hey, Tech Geek, how's it going? Uh, things are going pretty well. I am working on Dijkstra's shortest path. Um, I just got it working for an adjacency matrix representation of a graph and have a okay understanding of how that works. Um, and I was looking at how difficult it would be to implement it for an adjacency list representation of a graph. Not sure that I want to do this, but maybe, maybe. Yep, in Ruby, in Ruby, that's right. Oh, nice. Thanks for the follow. Thanks for the follow. I appreciate that. Is it the ruby that got you? Alright. I understand how this works. to get this working. That and the automatic interaction. How long have you been working on this? Um, This being Dijkstra's? Um, well, I started on it yesterday, so I guess a few hours. And to be fair, I'm not like... Me working on it is reading about it on geeks for geeks and then reading through the code and copy coding what i can well, the cool thing is they don't have ruby on geeks for geeks so i have to translate the code no matter what and this is the first time seeing most of these algorithms and data structures um yeah so getting any understanding from it is super helpful And I've been learning like lots of fun little Ruby isms along the way. Oh, and if you're asking about streaming, ooh, I started this year. So I've been streaming every day this year, 21 days now. I don't know Ruby, but want to learn it someday. Right now I'm working on data structures and JavaScript. Nice, that's awesome, that's awesome. Um, are you using any type of syllabus or anything like that? Or I guess where are you getting your data structures and JavaScript information from? Taking online courses at my college for my degree. Oh, nice, nice. Huh, that's interesting. That's the the first college that I've heard using or teaching JavaScript. I guess I don't do much research into colleges. But yeah, that's cool. That's cool that they're teaching it. Yep, got them in distance. Makes sense. Print. Still. Ah, 
Rigidity list. That's what I was wanting to look at. So implement the heap. Ray size and position. There's a min heap node somewhere. Ah, yes, the good old min heapify. Data structures class can be done in Java, C Sharp, C++, and Python, which surprised me. Do you know other languages? Um, I'm pretty good with JavaScript and Ruby right now. Uh, I've messed with C Sharp and Java and Python a little bit, and even Rust a little bit, but I know basic syntax at best. if my is JavaScript hard um, <laughs> I think no is the short answer but it can be frustrating at times um, and the frustrating part isn't necessarily the language itself um, it's more because JavaScript is so popular it's <laughs> really hard to know what the best packages are or the best practices are there are some generalizations but it's definitely not as mature as something like C, C++, Java or even Ruby um, to where a lot of things have like Ruby especially has converged on Ruby on Rails and basically anywhere you see it nowadays that's what it's being used with Similar with like Java and Spring. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm looking at my min heap. I have those somewhere. Oh, where did I implement that? Is it in arrays? F min heap sorting arrays. Ah, there we go. So it's initialized with an array and a size. Nice. Did you say you're converting code from a different language to Ruby? Yep. That's exactly what I'm doing. Um, when I first started this, like a couple of weeks ago, I was trying my best to like effectively read the description of a data structure or route or algorithm and then try and implement it on my own. Um, heh. but never having seen a lot of this stuff that was really hard and really slow. Um, and so if I've never seen it, have no idea what's going on, I'll usually read through it, try to get an understanding, and then copy all of the code that Geeks for Geeks used to implement it, and then translate it to Ruby. And then after I get it working, I usually like console log or print a bunch of stuff to make sure I understand where things are happening and then refactor it to be more Ruby-like. Uh, is there a harder, easier language? Yes. <laughs> the C++ and Java, uh, well, C, C++ in particular, are the most difficult to translate from. Um, because they deal with references a lot. That's what the little asterisk is talking about. So they pass around the references. So I have to be careful with that in Ruby sometimes. And 
just make sure I'm passing passing things appropriately. It's only caught me once. Uh, Python is actually the easiest to translate from. It's the most similar. Yeah, yeah, it's the most similar. It's a lot more uh, succinct. Usually, usually. <laughs> Speaking of, let's just let's just dive right in. I'll go ahead and re-implement a min heap for this. Okay. I won't use the min heap I have. So this is going to be a ton of code. So the heap class, extract min, is empty, decrease key. Okay. So this is the heap implementation. Let's make sure I can get this heap imp implemented. Class heap. How did I comment all that out so fast? And thank you for answering. Oh yeah, no problem. No problem when answering the questions. That's what this is all about. I'm here to learn, and if you have questions, that's even better. That tests my knowledge. Uh, oh, um, commenting it out so fast, I have a, I use Vim key bindings in VS code and I, it's got a little plugin to where when I type GC, it comments out or uncomments what I have, um, highlighted. And I use it a ton. When I do stuff on leak code or code in game and it doesn't have that, it it definitely slows me down a little bit. Okay. That ray. Equals array that size equals zero, and I guess this is a position array. Oops. Cool. Def new node. It's making all the nodes an array. That's cool. Min heap node equals v. Let's not 
doing anything with it. that to equal array b professional what's going on uh yeah i am still playing with graphs i got dijkstra's shortest path on an adjacency matrix figured out or at least working not figured out working uh now i'm trying to do it for an adjacency list Doing my usual, uh, <laughs> doing my usual where I copy over code from Geeks for Geeks and rewrite it in Ruby and hope I learn something. Hasn't let me down yet. What are you up to, professional? Still hammering on some Java? heap is stored in an array and because it is a min heap this is how you access the values yeah 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 cool so smallest is not a great name it's better to be called current and then this is the left and right nodes of current Left is less than size. Oh. <sighs> Don't like the way some of this is being done, but that's okay. It's okay. Ray smallest mm -hmm. then smallest equals right if right. Did I do that wrong? Right is less than size. And right is less than smallest one. Yep. Okay. sure it, my mic was working all right if smallest oh, okay i guess smallest is an okay name it is not equal to index Okay. That means that 
position. Array. Smallest. Zero. Equals index. Position array. Index zero equals smallest. Oh, that's weird. <clears throat> Swap node, smallest, and then index. on smallest. Okay. Let me make sure that swap node is taking in smallest and index. Yep, those look okay. I don't understand what that's doing, but it's okay. is empty. one update position of last node Actually using size, not a rate on length. So at size and at size. I 
I stop streaming or something? Yeah. Okay, no, we're good. We're good. And then, and then, heapify on zero. Just return and then size equals zero. of V and heap array. Okay. What? Why didn't they just implement a parent function? Or a parent method. Okay, I can do that later. I can do that later. Um, index minus one over two. I can clean this up. Index. 
Okay. So that's the swap complete. Then. Seems helpful enough. Dev is in back here. Oh, that's interesting. Does it make sense? Position value less than at size okay cool files so that's good so that's the heap and there's quite a bit of code Adjacency list set up. So I will likely just use that and then set up the extra. Yep, perfect. Okay, I will save this for tomorrow. It's time to go hang out with the fam. This has been good. Thanks everybody who stopped by and chatted. It's always awesome. I will. Cool. Let's see. Last. Deeks. Deeks. Go update the README. Day 21. Add Jason C. Tricks. Woohoo! Uh, a bit confused on this. Did get it working.
Okay, let me copy those links. That's not what I wanted. Jason C. List. That's it. That wraps up day 21 for me. Uh, and if you've watched this far, thanks for joining me and I'll see you later.